Hello all, welcome to Forest Biology. So today let's look into the, the last chapter of human physio physiology that is chemical coordination and integration. This is all about the endocrine glands. So endocrine glands lacks ducts and are hence called as ductless glands. Their secretions are called as hormones. So what are hormones? Hormones are non-nutrient chemicals which act as intercellular messengers and are produced in trace amounts that is less amounts. So this chapter is only about the human endocrine system which, which is very easy actually. So let's look into this. What are the different endocrine uh, parts in our body that is pituitary, pineal, thyroid, adrenal, pancreas, parathyroid, thymus and gonads that is testis in male and ovary in females are organized endocrine body in our uh, bodies in our body so in addition to this some of the other organs are gastrointestinal intestinal tract liver kidney heart these also produce the hormones first the hypothalamus the hypothalamus is the basal part of the encephalon that is forebrain and it regulates a wide spectrum of functions so the hormones produced by the hypothalamus are of two types that is the releasing hormone which helps in secretion and the inhibiting hormone which uh, helps in which uh, inhibits the secretion so for example hypothalamic hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone stimulates the pituitary synthesis and release of gonadotropins whereas somatostatin is another hypothalamus uh, um, Harm, is another hormone which inhibits the release of growth hormone from the pituitary. Next, the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland uh, is located in a bony cavity called cella ter tersica and is attached to the hypothalamus by a stalk. Uh, it is uh, divided into adenohypophysis and also neurohypophysis. Adenohypophysis has two portions that is parts distalis and pars intermedia so the pars distalis region of pituitary which is commonly called as anti anterior pituitary produces different hormones such as growth hormone prolactin thyroid stimulating hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone luteinizing hormone follicle stimulating hormone and pars intermedia secretes only one hormone called as melano melanocyte stimulating hormone so you should know this only one hormone because it's kind of an exception because it is uh, secreted by pars intermedia and neurohypophysis that is pars nervosa which is also called as post posterior pituitary stores and releases two hormones which is called as oxytocin and vasopressin except these three hormones everything is produced in secreted in adeno uh, pars distalis region so this they can ask find the odd one out so this might be also a question so over secretion of GH stimulates abnormal growth of the body which leads to the gigantism and low secretion of G uh, growth hormone results in stunted growth results which results in the pituitary dwarfism. Excess secretion of growth hormones in adults especially in the middle age can result in a severe disfigurement which is called as acromegaly. Prolactin regulates the growth of the mammary gland and formation of milk in them. TSH stimulates the synthesis and uh, secretion of thyroid hormones from the thyroid gland. ACTH that is adrenocorticotrophic hormone stimulates the synthesis and secretion of steroid hormones which is called as glucocorticoids from the adrenal cortex. LH and FSH stimulate gonad gonadal activities and hence are called gonadotrophins. In male, LH stimulates the synthesis and secretion of hor hormones which is called an androgen from the testis whereas uh, in the males itself, FSH and androgens regulate spermatogenesis. In females, LH induces ovulation of fully matured follicles, that is graphene follicles, and it maintains the corpus luteum formed from the remnants of the graphene follicle after the ovulation. FSH stimulates the growth and development of ovarian follicles in female. MSH, that melanocyte stimulating hormone, acts on the melanocytes and regulates pigmentation of the skin. Oxytocin acts on the smooth muscles of our body and stimulates their contraction. In females, it stimulates a vigorous contraction of uterus at the time of childbirth and milk ejection from the mammary gland. Vasopressin acts mainly at the kidney and stimulates the resorption of water and electro electrolytes by the distal tubules and thereby reduce the loss of water through urine which is also called as diuresis and it is also called antidiuretic hormone ADH.
an impairment so this is an extra question uh, this is an extra paragraph from the old ncrt so this is very important an impairment affecting synthesis or release of adh results in a diminished ability of kidney to conserve water leading to water loss and dehydration and this condition is called diabetes insipidus next the next gland is the pineal gland so this is present in the dorsal side of the forebrain and it secretes a hormone called as melatonin so melan melan melatonin stimulating hormone is secreted in the pituitary gland whereas melatonin is secreted in the pineal gland so melatonin plays a very important role in the regulation of 24 hours that is diurnal rhythm of a body it helps in maintaining the new normal uh, rhythms of sleep wake cycle body temperature in addition to it it also influences metabolism pigmentation menstrual cycle as well as our defense capability next is the thyroid gland it is composed of two lobes which are located on either side of the trachea so it has uh, follicles and stromal tissues and the follicle cell synthesizes two hormones that is tetrahydrothyronin or thyroxin that is T4 and triiodothyronin T3. Iodine is essential for the normal rate of the hormone synthesis in thyroid. Deficiency of iodine in our diet results in the hypothyroidism and enlargement of the thyroid gland which is called as goiter. So they have mentioned here that the deficiency of iodine will cause hypothyroidism which you can understand. But enlargement of thyroid gland is called as goiter. So a few people what they'll do is enlargement. It means hyperthyroidism. No, it is hypothyroidism. In case of hypothyroidism only, the thyroid gland will enlarge which causes goiter. So you should not confuse between hypo and hyper. Hypothyroidism during pregnancy causes defective development and maturation of the growing baby leading to the stunted growth, mental retardation, low intelligence quotient, abnormal skin and deaf mutism in adult women hypothyroidism may also cause menstrual cycle to become irregular due to the cancer of thyroid glands or due to the development of nodule of the thyroid glands the rate of synthesis and secretion of thyroid glands is increased to abnormal high levels leading to a condition called hyperthyroidism and there is an uh, important paragraph which is not given in old NCRT and they have included in this so this is very important exophthalmic goiter it is a form of hyperthyroidism characterized by enlargement of thyroid glands protrusion of eyeballs increased basal metabolic rate weight loss and is also called as graves disease thyroid hormones play an important role in regulation of basal metabolic rate they also uh, help in maintenance of water and electrolyte balance. They also secrete protein which is called as thyrocalcitonin which regulate the blood calcium levels TCT. So this and this are counter current parathyroid and thyroid. So parathyroid are four in number which is present on the back side of the thyroid gland one pair each in the two lobes of the thyroid gland. So the parathyroid gland secrete a peptide hormone which is called as parathyroid hormone. The secretion of parathyroid hormone is regulated by circulate, circulating levels of calcium ions. So PTH increases the C, uh, calcium level in the blood and it stimulates the process of bone reabsorption and also stimulates reabsorption of calcium by the renal tubules and increase C plus, uh, CA2 plus absorption from the digested food. PTH is a hypercalcemic hormone, hyper because it increases the level of calcium. And TCT, that is which you studied here, thyrocalcitonin also plays a significant role in calcium balance body. Calcium balance in the body. Next is the thymus. So the thymus plays a major role in the development of immune system. This gland secretes the peptide hormone, which is called as thymocytes. This play a major role in the differentiation of T lymphocytes, which provide cell mediated and humoral immunity. In addition, thymocytes also promote production of antibodies to provide humoral immunity. Thymus is de degenerated in old individuals, resulting in decreased production of thymocytes. So the immune response in the old persons are weak. Next is the important one that is called adrenal gland. Our body has one pair of adrenal glands, one in the anterior part of each kidney. The centrally located tissue is called as adrenal medulla and the outside that this lies the adrenal cortex. Outside is cortex, inner is medulla. This is also an important paragraph which is included in the new NCRT. 
Under production of hormones by the adrenal cortex alters the carbohydrate metabolism causing acute weakness and fatigue leading to a disease which is called as Addison's disease. So if you see here outer is cortex, inner is medulla. The adrenal medulla secretes two hormones which is called as adrenaline or epinephrine or and, sorry and noradrenaline or norepinephrine. So these are called as catecholamines. Adrenaline and noradrenaline are rapidly secreted in response to stress of any kind and during emergency situations. So they are also called as emergency hormones or hormones of flight or fright. So this is important which hormone is called emergency or hormones of fight or flight. So these two hormones. These hormones increase alertness, pupillary dilation, piloerection, sweating, etc. Both the hormones increase the heartbeat the strength of the heart contraction and rate of respiration. Catecholamines also stimulate the breakdown of glycogen which results in an increased concentration of glucose in the blood. In addition, they also stimulate the breakdown of lipids and proteins. The adrenal cortex can be divided mainly into three layers, zona reticularis, zona fasci fasciculata and zona glomerulus. So how to remember this from inner to outer so you have to know which is inner and which is outer so i'll uh, tell you how to remember this so you first remember from outer to inner so if you see zona is common this is glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis so gfr which you studied in excretory product and elimination gfr outer to inner the corticoids which are involved in the carbohydrate metabolism are called as glucocorticoids. In a body, cortisol is the main glucocorticoid. Corticoids which regulate the balance of water and electrolytes in a body are called as mineralocorticoid. Next, aldosterone is the main mineralocorticoid in our body. Glucocorticoids stimulate gluconeogenesis, lipolysis and proteolysis and inhibit cellular uptake and utilization of amino acids. Cortisol produces anti-inflammatory reactions and suppress the immune response and they also help in stimulating the RBC production. Aldosterone helps in the maintenance of electrolytes, body fluid, volume, osmotic pressure and blood pressure. Next is the pancreas. Pancreas is a composite gland which acts as both endocrine and exocrine. This is very important. Endocrine pancreas consists of islet of Langerhans. There are about 1 to 2 million islet of Langerhans in normal human pancreas representing only 1 to 2 percent of the pancreatic tissue. There are two main cells that is alpha and beta. Alpha will produce glucagon, beta will produce insulin. Glucagon is a peptide hormone which helps in maintaining the normal blood glucose level. So glucagon acts on uh, the liver cells that is hepatocytes and stimulates glycogenolysis which results in an increased blood sugar that is hyperglycemia. This hormone stimulates the process of gluconeogenesis. Glucagon reduces the cellular glucose uptake and utilization. So glucagon is called hyperglycemic hormone because it increases the glucose level. Insulin is contra contrast to this so it is a hypoglycemic hormone it decreases the uh, glucose level so this is uh, this is useful in regulation of glucose hem hem homeostasis insulin acts mainly on the hepatocytes and adipocytes and hence cellular glucose uptake and utilization so there is a rapid movement of glucose from blood to hepatocytes and adipocytes result in decreased blood glucose level so this is called as hypoglycemia glycemia insulin also stimulates the conversion of glucose to glycogen which is called as glycogenolysis in the target cells so prolonged hyperglycemia leads to a complex disorder which is called as diabetes mellitus and is associated with loss of glucose through urine and form formation of harmful compounds which is known as ketone bodies next is the testes a pair of testes is present in the scrotal sac of the male individual. So testes performs dual function as a primary sex organ as also and also as endocrine gland. So this is composed of seminiferous tubules and interstitial tissue. The Leydig cells or interstitial cells which are present in the intertubular spaces produces a group of hormone which is called as androgen and the, which is mainly testosterone. So androgen regulate the development, maturation and function of the male accessory sex organ like epididymis, vas deferens, seminile vesicles, prostate gland, and urethra. Androgen also plays a major stimulatory role in the process of spermatogenesis. 
androgen act on the central neural system and influence the male sex be, sexual behavior these hormones produce anabolic effects on protein and carbohydrate me, uh, meta metabolism next is the ovary ovary is the female female primary female sex organ which produces one ovum during each menstrual cycle so ovary also produces two group of steroid hormones which is called as estrogen progesterone estrogen is uh, synthesized and secreted mainly by the ovarian follicles after ovulation the ruptured follicle is converted to a structure which is called as corpus luteum and it secretes progesterone estrogens produce a wide range of actions such as a uh, growth and activities of female sex secondary sex organs development of uh, ovarian follicles appearance of female secondary sex characters mammary gland development progesterone is uh, useful in the supporting to the pregnancy and it also acts on the mammary glands and stimulates the formation of alveoli and milk secretion next the hormones of heart kidney and gastrointestinal tract the atrial wall of a heart secretes a very important peptide hormone which is called as ANF atrial natriuretic factor this decreases the blood pressure when the blood pressure is increased ANF is secreted which causes the dilation of blood vessels and this reduces the blood pressure the juxtaglomerular cells of the kidney produce a peptide hormone which is called as erythropoietin which stimulates erythropoiesis that is nothing but the formation of RBC endocrine cells present in the different parts of gi tract secrete four major major important peptide hormones which is called gastrin secretin kilo uh, kilo cystokinin and gastric inhibitory peptide so these four are important and the functions of this are very important so this is a most probable question any one of this they may ask in an mcq so gastrin the name itself tell is acts on the gastric glands and stimulates the secretion of hcl and pepsinogen secretin acts on an exocrine pancreas and stimulate the secretion of water and bicarbonate cck acts on the pancreas and gallbladder and stimulates the secretion of pancreatic enzymes and bile juice gip gastro in in gastric inhibitory peptides inhibits the se gastric secretion and motility so these four are very important any one of this will be a most probable question next is the mechanism of hormone actions hormone produce their effects on target tissues by binding to a specific protein which is called as hormone receptor located in the target tissues only hormone receptor present on the cell membrane of the target cells are called as membrane bound receptors and the receptors present inside the target cell are called as intracellular receptors which are mostly the nuclear receptors binding of a hormone to its receptors leads to a formation of hormone receptor complex each receptor is specific to one hormone only and hence the receptors are specific so receptors are specific hormones can be divided into groups that is peptide polypeptide protein hormones the examples of this are very important this has been asked in the pyq also and it is a most probable question so example is insulin glucagon pituitary hormones hypothalamic hormones then the steroids which are cortisol testosterone estradiol and progesterone idothyronine is, is the thyroid hormone amino acid derivatives is the epinephrine hormones which interact with the membrane bound receptors normally do not enter the target cell but generate the second second messengers which in turn regulate cellular metabolism hormones which interact with the intracellular receptors mostly regulate gene expression or chromosome function by the interaction of hormone receptor complex with the genome so if you see this diagram is important they are they can ask directly uh, in the gap like fill in the uh, gap and this as well is important so this is all about this chapter please like share and subscribe so that you don't miss out any notification and please wait for the next chapter thank you all